So, so far we have discussed the definition of continuity over the interval at the point and also for an arbitrary sets. Uh, we can extend that definition or we can define the continuity of function in an arbitrary metric space in a similar way which we have defined in case of a point on the real line by choosing the in terms of the neighborhoods. So, we here just for the sake of we define the continuity of the function in a arbitrary metric space at a some point in the arbitrary metric space. So, suppose x d and y d are two metric spaces or metric spaces okay. and E is a non empty subset of x. P is a point belonging to E, P is a point belonging to E and F is a mapping from E to E into y into y. Okay. Then we say f is continuous at a point p belongs to E if for a given f sin l greater than 0 there exist there exist a delta which depends on f sin l as well as the point say p as well as the point p p uh, such that d of f x comma f p in the metric of y is less than f sin r for all points all points x belongs to E for which the distance from P in a metric x is less than delta. So, uh, and if the if f is continuous if f is continuous at every point every point of E then we say f is continuous continuous on E. Okay. So, the meaning is like this suppose this is our set a, a metric space x d and here is say metric space y d. E be a non empty subsets of x and p is an arbitrary point in and p is a point in E. F is a mapping which maps E to E into y. So, image of p will go to f of p in y. The function f is said to be continuous at the point p if we draw a neighborhood for a given f sin l greater than 0 or if we draw a neighborhood of the point f sin l neighborhood of the point f p in the metric space by d then corresponding to this neighborhood there exist a delta neighborhood of p in x such that image of any point x inside this neighbor delta neighborhood will fall within the f sin l neighborhood of f p. Then we say f is continuous at p. So, it is just like a similar definition which we have used in f sin l delta definition over the real line over the point in a uh, on the real line in an interval a p. Okay. So, that is a general form and if p suppose an isolated point then the function will remain continuous. So, this is very uh, just a remark we can say that if p is an isolated point if p is an isolated point isolated point uh, of e if p is an isolated point of p then for uh, any epsilon greater than 0 then 
for any epsilon greater than 0 for any epsilon greater than 0 we choose we can pick up we can pick up a delta get depends on say epsilon and the point p of course greater than 0 greater than 0 so that <coughs> so that the point x so that uh, the only point the only point uh, p x belongs to e p belongs to e is basically for which for which this results hold d by uh, d x x p is less than delta is nothing but x equal to p because p is an isolated point. So, basically in the neighborhood of the point p with an arbitrary small delta there we cannot get any other point except p. So, for this point we can assume any epsilon uh, the image will fall within always this region then clearly obviously the image of this f of x f of p under y will remain less than epsilon L because there is no such point only the point x will be p itself x will be p itself. So, the image will be 0. So, for any arbitrary epsilon L greater than 0 this condition always holds because if p is a isolated point then there is no such x different from p available only the x will be p itself and as soon as you take x is equal to p the distance between f p to f p becomes 0 and this will always be less than any positive quantity. Therefore, the function is automatically continuous this implies f is continuous always at an isolated point. This is true. Okay. Now, in this lecture we wanted to give the some relation between the continuity and compactness continuity and connectivity. So, those results are interesting that is we have seen that uh, image of a open set or a image of a closed set under a continuous function need not be a closed or open set need not be an open set. So, this will uh, give a very give gap that we cannot assure that image of a uh, open set under a continuous function will always remain open or image of the closed set will always remain closed that is not uh, pos uh, uh, that we have seen a counter example for it. However, in case of the compact set this is uh, very interesting result if x is compact the f of x will be compact that we will show. So, the relation between the continuity and compactness if f is continuous it is a very interesting one. But prior to this, we need a definition of the continuity in terms of the uh, inverse image of the open sets. So, that gives a result which can also be treated as a definition for a continuity a mapping f a mapping f of a metric space x d x d say here d x of course, we write uh, into a metric into a metric by d a mapping f of a metric space x d into a metric by d uh, is continuous on x is continuous on x if f inverse if f inverse v is open is open in x in x for every x d in x for every open set v in y in y that is the meaning is that f is continuous f is continuous on x if and only if inverse image of the open set is open inverse image of an open set is open is always open. So, that gives another criteria to judge whether the function is a continuous or not. 
So, that is uh, interesting particularly it is used when the topology uh, in topology uh, normally the definition of the continuity is taken is this way. The inverse image of the open set is open then the function will be set to be a continuous. Let us see the proof of this uh, theorem because it will need like that. So, what is a suppose f is continuous? Suppose f is continuous f is continuous on x f is continuous on x. Okay. We wanted the inverse image of the open set is open. So, let us take V be an open set V V is an V an open set in by in order to show the inverse image of V is open what is required it is required to prove to prove that every point <coughs> every point of this set f inverse v is an interior point. So, if it is interior point then f inverse v will be open. Okay. So, this we want to let us pick up a point a. So, suppose p is a point belonging to x such that f of p is in v. So, what do you mean? It means that is f p is taken in the set of f inverse b. Okay, that is what I mean. Now, we wanted to show there exists a neighborhood around the p which is totally contained in f inverse b. Okay. So, let us start with this. What is b? Since b is given to be since v is open it is already given and f p is a point in v this is the point in v. So, we can find a de epsilon neighborhood around the p f p which is totally contained in v. So, uh, so there exists an epsilon greater than 0 such that such that uh, y belongs to capital Y if the distance of uh, f uh, f p from by under the metric y is less than epsilon is it not distance of this is less than f. so this by belongs to y uh, since b over so there exists this y and since f is continuous and since f is continuous at p so for a given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta neighborhood in the domain where all the point in the delta neighborhood uh, the image will fall here. So, because it is continuous so there exists delta greater than 0 such that the image of this d of by f x f p this less than epsilon r provided the distance between x and p under y is less than delta this by definition. Okay. But all the point which lies here the point y belongs to capital Y if this is uh, all the point with this x 1 less than delta this condition holds. So, this condition means f x is in the epsilon neighborhood of f p. So, x must be the point of the inverse, but no sorry, but if x belongs to f inverse p f inverse v that is f x belongs to v then that is f x belongs to v then what happens then? If f x is in v f p is also in v and it lies in the epsilon neighborhood of v and f is continuous therefore, this continuity. Uh, uh, so, uh, for this epsilon this holds it means the continuity of f follows. So, uh, so uh, because of the continuity we get that uh, so that distance between f x f p will remain less than f uh, less than epsilon. Now, I will just uh, explain what we did. Uh, 
in fact what we have taken is that this is okay first we have taken a v as a open set in y okay then we have fixed up the uh, since p is already taken the image will be f of p belongs to f b so f b is here now since this is on op, uh, f is continuous at p so what we get there exist a delta greater than 0 such that whenever the point x lies between the delta neighborhood the corresponding image f x and f by less than f final. So, what this shows? This shows the point x uh, if it is in f inverse b the f x must be in b. So, once it f x in b then the distance of this because less than f final this shows there exist a neighborhood around the point f b which is totally contained inside b. So, v is an open. Uh, so, this uh, contain therefore, this will be an open set. So, f inverse b is an interior point p is an ok. So, p will be an interior point totally because this is our f inverse v ok. So, this will be an interior point. Now, conversely conversely suppose f inverse v is an open is open in x open in x for every open set for every open set v in y then we wanted to show f is continuous so let f belongs to uh, uh, sorry p belongs to p belongs to x and let f sin l greater than 0 continuity at the point ok. Let us consider the set B as the set of those points y belongs to capital Y such that the distance of this point y with f p in the metric d y is less than f sin l. Consider this set. So, this is basically in an open ball centered at f b with the radius f sin l. So, obviously, this will be an open set. So, this is an open set ok. So, there is nothing uh, uh, prove it. Because, so, once it is open set according to our assumption the inverse is also open for every. So, this implies that f inverse v this will be an open set is open in x ok. Hence, once it is open, so there exist a delta neighborhood. So, every point is an interior point, hence there exist hence there exist delta greater than 0 such that such that uh, x belongs to f inverse b as soon as as soon as the distance from p of x under the metric is is less than delta. It means because it is open. So, we can find a neighborhood around the p which is totally contained inside this contained inside this neighborhood. So, <coughs> this x will be the point inside that neighborhood. So, it belongs to a as soon as this comes ok. But if x is an element of f inverse v then the image f x will be in b by uh, definition f inverse. So, when f x in b, so what we get? So, the distance of f x from f b under the metric y will remain less than f sin l, will remain less than f sin l because of this, because as soon this point is in b and for all y which are in uh, v uh, contains those by whose distance is less than f sin l. So, this point f x minus f x comma f b under uh, the metric y is less than f sin l. So, this shows now this shows the f is continuous ok. 
at p and that proves the result ok. So, this uh, particular result will be used for establishing the relation between the compactness and continuity. So, let us see uh, the result is relation between continuity and compactness between continuity and compactness. Thorum. Uh, suppose f is continuous f is continuous uh, mapping f is continuous mapping of a compact metric space of a compact metric space x x is given to be compact this is important x is giving to be a compact metric space ok uh, x into a metric into a metric y metric space y y then the result says f of x is compact. So, a very interesting result the image of a compact set under a continuous function will always be compact. And in fact, as a particular case we have seen that if you take any closed interval the image of closed and bounded interval in R 1 because closed and bounded interval in R 1 is a compact set. So, image of the closed and bounded interval under f is coming to be compact and even the R a cell k cell in R n space all in R k space is a compact set k cell in R k space is a compact set because R k space the k cell is a compact set. So, closed and bounded interval will be compact, but if you take only the closed set ok and not bounded it may not be a image may not be a uh, closed set ok it may be different that we have the various counter examples we have seen we are this, but this ok. So, <laughs> in order to show it is a compact set what we want to prove is that every open cover of this has a finite sub cover and it is already given x is compact. So, with the help of this we will establish this result. So, let us suppose V alpha be an open cover of x open cover of x ok. Now, once it is open cover it means each element each point B alpha when alpha is index set is an open set and since f is continuous. So, by the previous result the inverse image of the open set must be open. So, f inverse of V alpha for each alpha is a is an open set as f is continuous function ok. So, this is open that one shows f p. ok. Now, what is given is given that x is compact. So, any open cover of x will have a finite sub cover f inverse v alpha is an open set in x. So, the uh, and g f v alpha is an open cover. So, correspondingly we can say this will behave in the alpha belongs to in there is if we choose this as an open cover for x then since x is compact there must be a finite sub cover for it. So, uh, uh, compact and the sequence of this is an open cover of x. So, there exist the finite sub cover there exist indices indices say alpha 1 alpha 2 say alpha n alpha n such that the finite union of this f inverse v alpha 1 union f inverse v alpha 2 union f inverse v alpha n will cover x because x is compact ok. 
now since our set E since for every E which is a subset of by for every E which is a subset of by we have this f of f inverse E f of f inverse E is contained in E this is true. Okay? If E is a subset of A, this may not be true, it is a opposite direction, but this is true when E is a subset of by. Okay? Then using this uh, U on 1, so apply on 1, what we get? f of x is contained in v alpha 1 union v alpha 2 union v alpha n. So, f x is covered by a finite union of the open interval open sets. So, from this open cover we can identify a finite set cover which covers the f x therefore, f x is compact. Okay. So, that is very interesting clear. Now, we next result we will show it the relation between the continuity and the connectedness. So, the relation is uh, relation between continuity and connectedness. This is also we prove in the write in the form of theorem. The theorem is if f is if f is a continuous mapping f is a continuous mapping of a metric space capital X of a metric capital X into a metric space y <coughs> into a metric space y and if and if E is a connected set, E is a connected subset of E and E is a connected subset of X sorry subset of X, E is a connected subset of X, then F of E is connected. If f is a continuous mapping of a metric space x into a metric space y, and if E is a connected subset of x, then image of this connected subset will also be connected. Okay, let's see the proof. Okay, uh, so assume that contrary. Suppose f e is not connected, then we will reach a contradiction. So if it is not connected, means that is f e can be expressed as the union of the two sets a and b, where a and b are a and b are, uh, are non empty or non empty separated subsets of by that is a bar intersection B is empty, A intersection B bar is empty, that is by definition. Okay? So, that is of this part. So, when A bar intersection of this and this is done. Okay? Now, uh, let us take then G, we can write it put G as the put G as E intersection F inverse A and H H E intersection F inverse B. Okay. Uh, now, if we take this, what is our F E? This is set E, this is set E, here this is F E this is f e. 
we have assumed f e is not connected it means there are all the two sets say a and b okay such that this condition is satisfied now find out the inverse of this so we are getting f inverse a here f inverse b here now if i find the intersection with a e intersection f inverse g a and e intersection f inverse g then obviously g and h will be non empty set because f e we have already assumed is a not connected set so there are the non empty sets a and b a and b are non empty whose union is f e and they are separated so inverse is intersection of this will be non, non empty so clearly g and h clearly g and h are non empty first thing okay so there is no problem in it. and also the union of g h is nothing but e union of this is nothing but e okay they are non empty means neither g is empty nor h is empty okay now since our a is always contain its closure it's always contain its closure and f inverse image of this a closure which is a closed set a ball a ball which is a closed set so inverse image of the open set is open it can be extended to the closed set inverse image of the closed set is closed if f is continuous so f inverse ag will be a inverse image will be a closed set okay so that's not so if it is closed and g is uh, there so we can say g is contained in because uh, g is already contained g is a subset of this f inverse a from here g is a subset of f inverse a so if we replace this a by a bigger closure of it obviously g will remain as a subset of this so we can say uh, g is so uh, uh, further g is contained in f inverse a closure okay that's it. since this is closed set since this is closed set is closed so obviously all the limit point of this must be here so the limit point if i take then of g closure of g closure of g if i take all the point set the point of g including the limit point then obviously it will also be contained inside it so this is correct so once it follow then what does it mean it means f of g closure is contained in a closure this is one thing so let it be one okay f of g now what is our h the h is this e intersection f inverse b okay so f of h since h is f intersection f inverse b so f of h sorry in the e this is e intersection so f of h will be what and what is our e where e is the uh, e is we have taken this one now is connected uh, f e is an f e is sorry f of e is this a union b and a union b they are separate set satisfy this condition so if you find the f of h then it becomes f e intersection b so that is equal to f e intersection b and then <coughs> when you find the intersection with this obviously it comes out to be b so f of h will be b now f of g inverse g closure is contained in a ball a ball intersection b is empty a ball intersection b is empty and a ball intersection b is empty because a and b are separated set are separated set these are separated set so this is empty set therefore when you find the intersection of g bar g bar 
with our h what happen intersection of g ball with h that is nothing but an empty set. So, intersection of g bar and h. So, intersection of g bar intersection h is empty. Why? Because g bar is contained in this f inverse a ok <coughs> h is b <coughs> f inverse a is contained in a bar and this uh, g bar is contained in f inverse a and this h is e intersection of this. So, when you find the g bar intersection h they will be disjoint they will be disjoint and empty. So, we conclude this same. Similarly, we can say g intersection h bar is empty. So, this shows g and h are g and h uh, they are uh, ok. So, g and h are uh, separated set are separated sets. So, E, but E is the union of G and H is it not. So, but E is the union of G and H. So, a contradiction. So, it is not possible therefore, this uh, so this contradicts that E is E is uh, giving to be connected set E is connected. And its contradiction is because of a rogue assumption that we have assumed that F e is not connected. So, this implies F of E is connected. Okay. It's okay or not? Because uh, why it is uh, five? Because G bar is contained in this. Okay, and H is B. We are these two are disjoint. These two are so therefore the intersection will be empty set. Okay, so that's what. So, this shows our uh, relation between the uh, this one. Now, a similar relation we can also establish for monotonic functions. So, the relations between uh, some monotonic uh, the uh, conditions. So, let us see the monotonic functions. If f is continuous then what? So, the uh, first result we see that result which is uh, I will not drive the result let us just see let f be monotonically increasing function f b monotonically increasing on the interval say a b then the left right hand limit of this f x when x tends to plus side uh, x tends to plus that is uh, f x plus f x plus that is this is the same as x plus h h tends to 0. So, f x plus and f x minus left hand limit of this that is equal to limit f of x minus h when h tends to 0. And then this exists if f is a monitoring increasing function left hand limit and right limit will always exist at every point at every point of x of the interval a b and in fact we have this inequality that supremum of f of t when t lying when t lies between a and x a and x will be equal to the left hand limit which is less than equal to f x which is less than equal to the upper limit and which is equal to infimum of f t when t lies between x and b. So, over the interval this scenario is there means the value of the function f x always lies between the lower limit and the left hand limit and right hand limit 
Now, if both are equal, then we say the continuity follows. If they are not equal, the point will be the point of discontinuity. The question is how many such points is possible over in the interval a b if the function is monitoring increasing function or monitoring decreasing function. Will that set of points where the monotonic monotonically increasing function is exist there in that will it be countable or uncountable. The answer is that set of all points where the monotonically 